Okay, so this video is going to be about uh, upgrading Contact Center Express, which we have it in uh, version 10.6. And we're going to upgrade it to the latest uh, 11.5. So I believe that it's important to check what is the latest version. And actually just uh, not too long ago, there was a new version that came up which looks to address a bunch of issues with the initial 11.5 uh, release so let's see if we can find those and i want to show you that here on the storage i already man this is so buggy but See if we can get it from here and nope. Okay, so I'm opening this guy from the vSphere client because the web client didn't like me. Now if you look here on the data store, I already have 11.5 and this is the release version. Now let's take a look at what we see here in Cisco downloads. So they have few fixes, one for the elliptic curve uh, certificate, one for the Apache struts 2 vulnerability. This one came up not too long ago. So we're going to upgrade to this guy to SU1 and then we're going to see if we need to apply those uh, which I think yes because this one is from April 4th and the latest SU is from April 3rd so we definitely need to address those after we complete the, the upgrade alright so we already we noticed that we already run on on the grace period and there's really no much to see here well, we don't have licenses per se so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the VM just this guy right here. I'm gonna start the console. And before we go any further, let's look at the actions, edit settings. Yeah, this is my problem with this. Maybe it's because Firefox is not good enough for the vSphere client. So let's try it on Google Chrome. edit settings okay we're getting further now I want to change the settings of the 
CD drive. And I want to make sure I point out to the new file I uploaded, which is this guy right here. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go back to UCCX and say util system upgrade initiate. Now let's look at some more some things that we need to be aware of when we're upgrading from 10.6 to 11.5 and hopefully we can find that information here So that's what, what I was looking for, this information. So we have 11.5 and for 11.5 we need, for 100 agents, which is what we have, we need two vCPUs, 10 gigs of RAM, and one hard drive of 146. All this is provided by the OVA that you download from the CCO download. In my case, when I installed, and hopefully I did it right, when I installed this UCCX, I was using, you know what? I was not using the 11.5 OVA. So let's do this. Let's get into this guy. We're not gonna start the, we're gonna quit it. We're gonna shut down this guy reason being is because we don't have the 10 gigs that this document is telling us about i have the one for 11.0 we're going to 11.5 so that's one of the things that we need to check so as soon as this guy completely shuts off i'm going to change the memory we're still gonna be on a uh, Red Hat Enterprise server, six and 64 bit. Now doesn't change. The hard drive that we're using, let's see what hard drive are we using. We're using 146. So this is the only thing that we need to change the memory all right so it's completely off i'm gonna go easy here and just put 10 gigs save it and then we see home uccx it has 10 gigs of memory I already have two cpus assigned to it and now let's power it on. Let's open the remote console. And I will see this guy coming up. I'm gonna pause the video right here. And then after it's completely up with all the services up and everything, I'm going to restart it and then I'm going to complete the, the upgrade process. Okay, so I'm back. All the services seems to be, seem to be up and running. And to check on that, reality is that we don't have too many things to check, but just being able to log in um you know 
The change that we made says the VM configuration does not match the OVA profile. Refer to uccx.wiki for the supported configurations. I already lost all the licensing. And hopefully we can upgrade. And I already have the DVD or the ISO image in the, in the VM. The first thing that we do is we do utils system upgrade initiate and then we're gonna say that it's a local DVD slash CD which is number three. This uh, gives us the op the opportunity to configure an SMTP host. This is used whenever you want to. You're not checking on the upgrade and you want the upgrade to provide you with the uh, updates. You know, it worked. It didn't work. It just finished, it didn't finish, or you know, any type of errors that you may encounter when doing a, an upgrade. Alright, so it was able to find the ISO image. We're gonna select number one. And now we're gonna wait until it gets the it gives us this information. So Usually when you have a high availability deployment, what's going to happen is that um, you have to do this. You're not supposed to change the version. You're supposed to, after you upgrade the primary, you have to upgrade the secondary without changing the version in both of them. And once the two of them are, are completely upgraded, you change the version on the first one, make sure it comes up, and then you do it on the secondary. But in this case, we don't have we don't have uh, an HA node. Okay, so we're gonna start the installation. And this is gonna take probably like uh, between two hours, four hours, depending on the size of the database and depending on, you know, so many other factors like uh, speed, like, you know, the health of your VMware server, all those things, you know, memory allocated for the server, memory allocated for the VM and the resources that it's sharing within other uh, VMs in the ESXi server. So. It may vary, but usually it takes between two and four hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video right here and then I'm going to monitor this guy and then come back and show you what's up. Okay, so our installation just finished. It says successfully install UC as install. So we're going to do is do show version active because I don't think it switched the version show version inactive okay so we're gonna do it does system upgrade versions now what's gonna happen is that it's uh, it's giving us a warning about the database replication if we're switching to a previous version from a higher um, release to a lower release but we're not doing that so we just want to do to say yes and this is gonna take some more time again i'm gonna pause the video here and then we'll reinitiate the video in just a few minutes so the version switch is still going on i guess we have uh nine steps that uh, that it's gonna go through before it switch it switches the version and restarts the server and I just wanted to show you that. So 
that you're not that you're familiar with the with this process okay so logging back into the console we see that the server already updated and I just want to check the active version and the inactive version just to make sure we are on the right one but if you notice coming here to the console it says 11.51 and yes indeed that's the inactive version and that's the active version okay next we're gonna take a look at uh, what else we need to do licensing the server and few other things that I want to point out when moving to the newest version of uh, contact center thank you for watching